Hello, this is Adam Humphreys, and today we are going to learn Sophie So. Woohoo! Uh, it has a lot of bugs and crashes a lot, but it's free, and Sophie So 2 is right around the corner, so. Ah! I can hardly wait. Okay, I hope it's free. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let's start with a new worksheet. Alright, <clears throat> so, basic navigation, right click. Moves it around. Scroll wheel is zoom. Control. Scroll wheel. You can zoom a lot more, a lot quicker. Let's start with a hoop here. There we go. <clears throat> and broad reframe, should I say. Now I hover over this. It says image. You can right click. You can change the frame size. And several other things in there. You'll notice a bunch of brand names here for standard hoop sizes and whatnot. Okay, <clears throat> these are the viewing modes. Uh, we don't have anything at all, so we can't use those yet. You got your import, your sewing simulation, and export, <clears throat> rotation, flipping, uh, associate or dissociate objects into a group, <clears throat> <clears throat> stitch ordering. This will be important. Uh, outline jump correction mode. I have not used that yet. Fill region, editing, and object mode. Okay, and now your basic objects. Create an outline object. Create a curved column object. A stitch object. And these are more or less this, or at least the straight. This is a straight object, straight stitch object. <coughs> it is exactly like an outline object, except it is straight, and only straight. And this is exactly like an outline object, except it makes a circle, but you can still edit it just like an outline object. So these two and fill region are probably some of the more important tools that you will be using in Selfie So. So, <clears throat> let me bring up an image. Okay, so I have a leaf here. And what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit on Selfie So. Now, let's say you want to do this, you want to make the leaf, maybe, maybe you want to come back to it later. Uh, Alt Print Screen will make a copy of the program. Uh, and you can probably use Microsoft Paint or so. Let's try Microsoft Paint. And you would basically run Selfie So at full screen, so it's always in the same location. So there we have Sophie So, and there we have Microsoft Paint. Let me move it up a little, little bit here. Now that I know that seems really annoying. Sophie So does not support, or at least Sophie So One does not support images. Sophie So Two will. So we have that. Now we can copy our cutie mark, our leaf here, and then uh, <coughs> go into Paint and Paste. Okay, too big. If you design in Paint or design somewhere else. <coughs> what you'd probably really want to do is take a screenshot here and go into Photoshop and paste the screenshot. Then you can uh, size down the leaf to fit that little hoop there. And it doesn't have to be Photoshop, it can be anything. So let's, uh, let's crop that. And really, you can crop the hoop since that's all we really care about. Okay, so there we are. Hmm. <laughs> Oops. Okay, right click. Oops, I must have selected an object here. Oh, I am inside. <laughs> I am inside of Microsoft Paint. Okay, there we are. We can move our hoop to the hoop that's inside of Photoshop. Now, we don't have to do this. I mean, it's not mandatory. It's just if you want to come back to something. So I'm just lining it up. Okay, <clears throat> uh, enough of that. Create an outline object. This is probably one of the most important objects that you will use. So now, notice we have our cursor here. We can correspond it one to one with each screen. 
So let's begin. You click and it'll create a start point. Now you have two control points to mess with. So you click and click and then you click again and it will make a hard point. So you click then you notice you move around and it's sharp. That's where it ends the curve. <coughs> so let's do this again. And to get this curve, we need to make another control point about here or so. Now, this is important. When finishing up an outline object at the end, you right click. Hmm. Otherwise, you will continue making an object. So right click, and then it's completed. So here it is. We can now click on the nodes and change things up. And I'm going to line this up a little bit. Okay, so that looks about lined up fairly well. All right, now let's make it into the leaf where we want it. First, let's save. Uh, saving is probably, should be the most frequent thing you do inside of Sophie So. Now, there is a, a quirk to this program. When you save, I'm going to save over this file here. When you save, make sure if you decide to rename your file or move your file into another folder, when you open that file, it will retain that original information. So when you when you go to file save, even though you moved or renamed your file, it will try to save it in that same folder with that same name. And if there is a and if you have the original file in that folder with that name, it will write over it. So if you copy and rename or move it to another folder, you go to file save as before changing what folder you save it in. So when you first open it after you renamed or moved it save as that's just a uh, interesting thing about it and another interesting thing that I have no idea how it is caused is that uh, everywhere else on your whole computer you will lose clipboard in other words you you try to control copy or control paste something it will not paste because there's nothing to paste because it did not copy anything just close Sophie so reopen it and that will be fixed I have no idea why that happens but just so you know if you try to copy some text and it won't paste that's why if you have Sophie so open okay <clears throat> so next step uh, let's uh, click on this we can right click outline properties and we have stitches we can have running stitch we're gonna have a set and stitch and we can view the stitch object and and I have my image here with my outline hoop so I can just go ahead and zoom in on this and I can see those stitches every one of them <coughs> and you have options here you have compensation when you move you can use the scroll wheel to move this in increments of 0.1 millimeters if you hit control and scroll it will be increments of 0.5 millimeters and on other different depending on your situations a few different uh, situations sometimes the increment will be 0.5 by default and you hit control the increment will be 0.1 so I just so you know and this is the top and this is the bottom on the object so let's just make that one the default there Oh, <clears throat> there is no undo inside of Sophie So version 1. There is undo in version 2, and there is, there is image support in version 2. I may have mentioned that already. So satin stitch, zigzag stitch, and you have control over the density. I tend to use about 6, works pretty good. Notice I try to change it to something like this, and it'll say, you lose information. So it turns into a running stitch. It's just a simple straight stitch. But you still have options. You can increase the distance between stitches or you can decrease the distance between stitches. But you go back to here and then object might be the data might be lost. So <clears throat> I usually go with a zigzag. You can go up to seven. But there is also satin stitch. So those are the options there. All right, so now we want to make this into a fill region. How do we do that? All right, right click again to navigate. What we do is we can go 
to either mode I think here select object notice it says object select right click object properties this is for the outline object to make a fill region we go to the region creator region creation and editing mode here we are we click on our outline we can, should be able to click anywhere just click here and if we're going to another outline object which we do not have I will I will cover that later now right, we just click on it again and now we have a bunch of options here I tend to select the option that has the most green and notice I went to the very end <clears throat> if you go in the middle you might have to change something but you can and we will so a permanent jump between endpoints I usually go to no and I say yes on continue region building since I am done now to see it in color we go back to the outline mode and notice it's already green green is the default color just so you know so what if we want to change that color outline properties fill outline we can change the stitch color <clears throat> and notice that the green it has here is not the green that uh, it selects in here sometimes it will select different colors usually it's gray or something and that is not really good uh, but that's just part of using selfie so or at least version one so we have a darker color there we have a darker color there now <clears throat> it looks like it might need to be a little bit lighter well it doesn't really matter you just want to make it a different color so when you're prompted for the color like oh you're on this different object you'll know which object or we'll know which thread to use oh man I think I know what the problem is I should really be using a lighter color on the region here there we go that looks better Oops. okay file save so now how does this how is this going how is this going to work out we select everything. No, wait. Okay, so you have import embroidery embroidery object for, format. You got some sewing simulation, and then you have export. You can select all this. Right click, compose into scalable embroidery format. Yes. Now you have the options to export it or sew it. Sew a simulation. So let's go to simulation. I usually go at about 120 stitches per second here again. If you click, you can use the scroll wheel. You can hit control, scroll, increments of 5. Or you can literally type in a number. I usually use it at about 120. Press play. And then it will show you what it is doing. <clears throat> but you'll probably notice the problem if you've in broad read stuff before that there is no underlay stitch simply right click go to region nope stitch style use underlay then you have all these options here and you zoom in you can see it you can also rotate it to see it you can probably see that a lot better now but let's uh, keep it where we would expect it and also you have compensation <clears throat> on mine I typically use a compensation between 0.7 and 1.5 that may seem like a lot but I guess it depends on what stabilizer you use so let's make it 0.7 since it's not a really large object here and you also got density you can control So you'll notice how that changes things there. How thing, how all those little points line up. If you want them to line up or not line up. And there's also the stitch pitch. As it is too, it's pretty tight. If you want a smoother look, I'd suggest about 5. Which seems to work out quite a bit better. I think this was at 1. Okay. So let's go with that. And let's simulate again. Right, let's save first. <laughs> Always save. 
<clears throat> so it's doing the underlay stitch and it'll get up and also on the stitch pitch a higher stitch pitch also results in fewer stitches of course I like a wider gap between each stitch and uh, probably uses less thread <clears throat> so it's sewing it up here increase that a little bit there and you can we can actually skip this too I'm just go to pause and next object and then we hit play and it'll do the sit the zigzag stitch around here so there it goes mm -hmm. and that's it once it gets that completed it's done and this is the order it will sew it in but you can change that order you can go to the one of the more important tools you gotta remember change stitch ordering and then you have these options here and normally it starts out at a lot smaller here but you can just drag and drop those of course we want the leaf the region fill region first so and set jump points but I'll cover those a little bit later I think that may be enough for now um, there's also the different viewing modes here so this is view with all compensation suppressed so notice how it changes that it'll take away the compensation even though it is still there and then of course all the fill region stitches the under under stitching the boundary dots more underlying stitches so it will hide all that so you can see what it will look like on top it will take away the region altogether so you can just see the underlay <coughs> and it will take away the outline object so you can just see the fill regions so those are the viewing options all right I think we've covered quite a bit next time I will cover the column object curved column object that's usually where the crashing starts to happen uh, but that can be avoided hmm. to a degree oh, also I'm not sure if I remembered to mention that uh, if for some reason you uh, your copy paste stops working because you have Sophie so open it is because you have Sophie so open close Sophie so and reopen it it will somehow prevent your clipboard from copying anything if you're trying to reply to a message on an email or something or DeviantArt you copy a piece of text and you try to paste it it will not paste and this is why <laughs> very strange yes I know okay thank you very much for watching I hope it was informative and I hope you were able to understand my voice <laughs>